Hi, this is Robert with Space Age Consulting, and today we're talking about the ATEM Extreme Mini ISO. No, the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. Pro is out the window, we're now extreme. So we have it already set up to take a look at. It is a much larger control surface than the um, ATEM Mini Pro that I had and then the ATEM Mini Pro ISO. So the question could be, why do you want to upgrade? What features do you get out of this that you didn't get out of your previous units? And are you so far happy with it? So let's start with what I had purchased before. I did have the ATEM Mini Pro. And then as soon as I bought it, and within a few days, I was even waiting for it to be delivered, they announced the Mini Pro ISO, which I like the features of the ISO. I like the ability to record each camera individually to an SSD. So I went ahead and ordered that as well. And I used it on a couple of events, a couple of shoots, and it turned out there were a couple of bugs. Let's be honest, there were a couple of problems. Sometimes I would import the ISO files into DaVinci Resolve and it wouldn't quite sync them up properly. It maybe took a couple of tries. But just having those files there, already time stamped, already able to put into a multi-camera setup was great. We even did a cooking show with multiple cameras and it turned out perfect because we didn't have to sync up the video with the audio or time code later, it all just synced up and made the editing easier. But I had a couple of problems with it. For one, it only came with one HDMI port, and for two, it only came with one USB-C port. Why was that a problem? Well, with the one HDMI out, I didn't have the ability to do multi-view, which I'm doing down here, as well as send another um, HDMI signal out to maybe a client or a director's monitor or even to another device to record off of. And with the original ATEM Mini, there was no multi-view out. So that was a no-go. So now this unit has the two HDMI ports out. And as you can see, I'm using both of them. What I've set up is a multi-view screen as well as a playback screen. And that will come in very handy later. The next problem is with the single USB-C. That was a real problem. See, I like to record to SSDs and that's what you would need to be able to record the ISO files. Um, but there are times when I also want to hook up to a computer. And sometimes you need the computer so that you can configure this. There's the idea that you don't need a computer to utilize the ATEM Mini line. Mm, that's not necessarily true. Now you can hook up the network and configure the system using network ports. And that's how I have it set up right now. The problem being sometimes you don't have time to set up a whole separate network. And then if you set up a network and don't have DHCP running, how do you get an IP address to this to configure it? And so you would still need to use a USB-C. But now as you're trying to use it with the USB-C, but still record, there's the problem. So now this unit comes with two USB-C ports. So what we have here, for me, is basically the perfect unit. Now in all honesty, did I need eight inputs? Mm, not really. But for the price of everything else that I needed, having the eight inputs is actually a bonus. So would I have liked to have an SDI input here? Eh, yeah. Sure, because my overhead camera is actually an SDI, and so I have to convert it to come in. And that does add a certain level of pain point, we can say, having to convert to HDMI to SDI, having to convert SDI to HDMI so that we can use it with this. Are HDMI cables great? 
Eh, not really. But we sometimes have to make these trade-offs to make it work well. There's no such thing as the perfect piece of equipment. There's no such thing as the perfect affordable piece of equipment either. So, and at $12.95, this is sort of pushing it. And what I'm going to do is, years ago, I interviewed um, Lumentech about their VS4, and I ended up buying their VS4 and actually doing a review on it, and you can find the review here. I'm going to compare those two units and see which one is easier to just get set up and start running with. But for now, let's go ahead and run through something real quick. I've already had a chance to sort of dive into this. It is familiar to us because we've used the ATEM Mini Pro and the Pro ISO. However, this has a ton more buttons that can do really nice things. Um, one of the great features is the picture in picture, which I haven't quite got set up yet. So what you have is, um, you have your background, the picture in picture goes on top, but if you want the picture in picture to be your regular setup, you know what, I'm gonna skip that for now. One of the features I think I have the most trouble dealing with is the cut bus, where it's one button press to go from one input to the next. I am used to a professional switcher where you have program and preview. And where that comes in, you can actually adjust that under the ATEM setup under panel settings. You can either do program and preview or cut bus. Right now it's set to cut bus. We'll switch it to program and preview. And so what you have now is, I don't know if you can see the colors, but you have red for program and green for preview. So you can preview different things and it doesn't switch automatically. And then to switch, you have to hit cut or auto. Now the reason why that's important is there's certain times you want to preview your shot before you take it. However, that makes for a slower program. If you have time to set up your shots, if you have time to um, take a look, maybe you're working with a cameraman and you're waiting for him to get his shot before you switch. That's where that's useful. However, when you're doing a one-man show sometimes, you just want to be able to switch quickly back to something and you don't want to have to use two hands. Maybe, maybe your hand is doing something else and you don't need to be able to switch immediately. And so at that point, we put it back to cut bus. What I find most interesting is they put it in a weird place. It's not on the regular software control panel. You have to actually go through setup to do it. I know when I originally got the ATEM Mini, it took me a long time to figure out where that was. Um, I had to go through, because it wasn't in the manual per se, but I, it, okay, it was, I just didn't read the manual, but we're not talking about that right now. I am very happy with this unit so far because I can see where it fixes the problems that I had with the um, ATEM Mini Pro ISO. And I really liked that product, but it, the limitations just really held me back. And once they made this announcement, I had to sell the others and go ahead and purchase this. So I'm happy with this so far. I will say you have to also be careful with um, Blackmagic products. When you first get them, test everything. Test all the buttons, test the inputs. I did update this to the latest firmware as soon as I got it just to make sure it's not a firmware issue and any of those bugs were taken care of. But um, as much as I love Blackmagic design products and I have them everywhere, test them and test them thoroughly. Test all the inputs, test all the outputs, test all the connections, everything, power supply, whatever. Make sure the unit you have is working to the specifications you need because you don't want to take it out in the field after only using ports one through four and then you realize ports five through eight don't work. So 
do your due diligence. Thank you for watching. This is Robert with Space Age. Continue to look out for new videos. I still have a ton of stuff to talk about, so keep checking back with me. Thank you, and here's hoping you see me soon.